Okay, hopefully these two sleeves will go well and then we can do some working because it will not allow me to study anymore for some weird reason. Oh, I'm sorry, Sean. I know we're gonna do terribly. Alvin, you don't have to lie to me. Oh, Alvin's face lights up the minute I walk into the library even though I failed him. Aw, thank you. Hey, congratulations. The golden televisions are a big deal. Thank you, we all worked hard on it. And you all deserve that win. Vice Versus is easily the best show this season. Well, that's thanks to everyone's hard work. Wonder what he would have said if we won the makeup award. Oh well, we'll never know. Miss Good and your grades are still excellent. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I only earned one dollar in ad revenue this month. Too bad. We've gone down. Oh, like we've gone down out of our couch. I really need you to. Why? Why? Why you no sleep? Uh, I'm literally gonna have like a week of sleep that I need to just do. Literally. Okay, so let's check our mail. Hey, Alvin W. Just like Travis W. Mm-hmm. I got an email from you. Get hype. Vice Versus is back next week. Let me know if you want to watch it together. Of course I do. <laughs> I'd be happy to watch with you. That's great. I'll reserve the library for us. Thanks, Alvin. And anyone into fashion? Summer's not for another week, but summer clothing is at the divide right now. Finally, I've seen those jeweled sandals in every fashion magazine, and I need a pair ASAP. ASAP. Okay, and Vice Versa starts up again next week. I can't wait. I'm totally having a viewing party in my dorm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And of course we gotta call Alvin. Salutations, let's go to the VG zone. Go kill some zombies. Um, let's play Zombie Hunter. Ready to rock. We barrel through the zombie wasteland with ease. Sean, your aim is still impeccable. Promise me that we can team up when the zombie apocalypse happens? It's a deal. Thanks for inviting me back. I had fun. So did I. Okay, well, let's sleep three times because I don't trust Sean anymore. And we'll go into town and get our summer clothing. GPA is going down, 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 down. Oh, thanks, Alvin. It's nice of you to lie to me. Oh, now you have a hard sleep. Uh huh. I knew it. I knew as soon as I scheduled three sleeps in a row, she was gonna be like, "I'm gonna have hard sleeps now." Well, at least you had the decency to fall out of the off the couch on the last one. <sighs> I need to study like mad. Okay, to the mall. I hear someone calling my name from across the mall. Oh, hello. Sean, over here! Allison is jumping up and down and waving her arms wildly, trying to get my attention. I hurry to her side. H hey, how's it going? Great, really great. I landed a gig. Like, not a big one or anything, but still. She looks about ready to scream with happiness. It was just for a student film, but I had lines and everything, and it was the most amazing experience. Well, congratulations. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations, girl. Okay. Let us... Ooh, what should I get? Hmm. These pantaloon shorts are just ridiculous. Um, well, I kind of like a fit top for the girl who wants to show off a little. Yeah, we'll get that. And that. And those. 
done. Ah, excellent. Okay, we get to do her video watching. The video room is empty when I arrive. That's odd. Usually Elvin has already set everything up by the time I get here. Oh, hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. Alvin holds up a pizza box. But I brought an apology. Ooh. Are we allowed to have food in here? He shrugs. Eh. There's a cafe attached to this place. And during finals week, lots of people basically camp out here. I think the rules say no, but unofficially no one cares as long as you don't make a mess. <laughs> Good enough for me. He lays the box on the table and pulls out his DVD set. I open the box and examine the contents. Pizza with goat cheese, artichoke hearts, sun-dried tomatoes, and spinach. Fancy. It's my personal favorite. I hope you don't mind. It's sort of a point of contention at home. Ah, the great pizza topping debate. Always a tough one. One of the many small happinesses I have now that I live away from home. As the youngest of three, I didn't win arguments very often. Mm-hmm. Understandable. Alvin flips on the TV and sits next to me on the couch. I wait for him to help himself to a slice of pizza before I eat any. Wow, not bad. How much do I owe you? Alvin brushes off the question. Nothing. Don't worry about it. No, seriously. How much? Sean, it's no big deal. Just think of it as a gift. But you're always paying for things for me. Like that photo at Halloween. Or the Moonlight Adventure book you got me. Aww. I'm sorry. Do you not like it? I'm just wondering why you do it. Um, I'm sorry this is too personal, but it just looked like you could use the help. What are you talking about? I, I mean, it kind of seems like finances are tight for you. I've seen how careful you are with spending money. How you spend a long time deliberating over what to buy and often leave without anything. Carefully portioning out your meals, wearing a limited wardrobe. <laughs> he notices he notices that we only wear one one set of clothes for the entire season. He looks away and his face flushes a deep red. I guess you could say I know the signs and I wanted to help. You know, get you nice things you wouldn't buy for yourself. And it seemed really rude to ask if you're poor, so I didn't say anything. Aw. Well, you're not wrong, but I thought all college students were tight with money. I didn't stand out that much, do I? Most freshmen aren't too frugal. With their newfound monetary freedom, they tend to overspend in their first year. Fair enough. But you still haven't explained why you're going out of your way for me. I did it because I want to. When I was in middle school, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. They managed to remove it, but she had to undergo years of treatment. It was expensive, and we had to take out a lot of loans just to pay for it. Yeah. My dad spent all his working hours working just his waking hours working just to pay for it, and we barely scraped by. My oldest brother wound up being the one who had to take care of me and my brother. And the whole time, friends and neighbors were very generous with us. They took care of us when we couldn't. Without the kindness of other people, I don't know where we'd be now. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, I really respect the people who helped us, and now that things are better for my family, I'd like to do the same. You mean you guys aren't drowning in student loans? Actually, all three of us are in scholarships. A whole family of geniuses, huh? <laughs> I'd like to meet the middle brother one of these days. But that's what I'm trying to say. If friends hadn't paid for my brother's uniform and dues, he wouldn't have been able to play soccer, and then he'd never have gotten a sports scholarship. And if our neighbor hadn't paid for math camp, maybe I wouldn't have realized how much I love math and I wouldn't have gotten so good at it. Sure, the three of us are good at what we do, but without the help of others, we wouldn't be here. I know you're smart and skilled and amazing, but does that mean you don't need any help? I mean, don't we all need help once in a while? Well, it's not that you're doing something bad, but I do wish you had spoken with me about it first. Would you have been okay with it if I had asked you? Probably not. I'm sorry. I overstepped my boundaries then. No, I didn't mean I don't like what you've given me. 
but you know I can't pay you back, right? Of course. That's the point, isn't it? It's not a gift if you expect something in return. Now that mom's treatment is over and my oldest brother has a job, we're doing really well. So if I can be generous with others, I'd really like to be. Well, I do appreciate it. But next time, please ask me about it first. Okay, I can do that. Alvin turns to face the television and sighs. Oh. The episode already started. I'm so sorry, I was talking too much. It's fine, we only missed the recap and the reveal of the victim of the week. <laughs> Besides, I like talking with you. Really? Of course I do. I wouldn't be here otherwise. Well, I like talking with you too. Thank you for spending time with me. Alvin and I turn our attention to the episode, discussing our thoughts on the plot. As the credits roll, Alvin hands me the pizza box. In case you get hungry later. I smile and open the box. Why don't we split it? Ah, uh, right. He nods and we quickly divvy up the remaining slices. Alvin tears the lid off the box and folds two makeshift containers. By the time he's done, he has a matching pair of misshapen cardboard lumps. Modern art? Just don't ask me to do origami. Duly noted. Thank you for tonight. Thank you too. And again, I'm sorry if I did anything wrong. You're fine. Just ask me next time instead of deciding things on your own. Right. He waves a quick goodbye and we part ways. <laughs> now it's summertime. I gotta check my wardrobe. But oh my goodness, that was so sweet. Oh, Travis, you got a job. Well done. Well done, my old boo. And they're doing well, and his their mom's still alive. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. <sighs> right. Summertime, though. Time to get the right outfit. Ooh. Ah. Very nice, girl. You are cute, cool, and classy. Excellente. Oh, we got new movies. Summer blockbuster time. New movies in theaters now. What do you guys plan on watching? Ooh. Moonlight Avengers at the top of my list for sure. Lol, I'm pretty sure we all guessed that already. I'm curious about Night Witches. Is it any good? Moonlight Avenger, you say? That seems strange. Yes, Vice Versus is finally back! Best season restart ever! Those jerks made us wait 10 whole minutes before we found out what happened to Katarina. 10 minutes and 12 seconds. Not like I was counting. I'm glad he didn't cut her face, but now that Katarina's in the hospital, what's going to happen? What's gonna happen indeed? Who can say? Alvin, I hear there's a certain movie you would like to go see. I love her new top. Looks so good. <laughs> hey, you're wearing your new outfit too. Okay, let's go see Moonlight Avenger Eclipsed. You know you'll have to fight him if you go. Are you sure you want to try to stop him? He was your best friend. That's exactly why it has to be me. That was incredible. True, they did change Justin Todd's origin story. Justin Todd! Jason, oh my goodness. But I think given the ending first film, it was the most logical choice. And the reference to the Wasteland story arc from the comics was just perfect. I admit that was a lot better than expected. The first one was fine, but this was so much better. Origin stories tend to be pretty standard, just so mainstream audiences can catch up. The second movie is where writers really get to play around and try new things. I can't believe I'm already counting down the days until the third one. Well, thanks for coming with me. No problem. I'm sure he didn't mind at all. Okay. I can definitely study now. I wonder how much our grade will go up. We'll try that once and see what happens. Work, blog, sleep. <laughs> Let's do that. See how much our grade goes up. We've tutored so much. I'm curious. Thanks, Alvin. So, like the new outfit. Okay, we're studying. Ah, perfect GPA. We just need to do it once. I'm 
Glad I didn't overdo it on the study thing. Woohoo! Oh, hello, Mr. Brandon. Good work today. Same to you. John seats himself in the makeup chair and waits for me to remove the scar on his face. This part always hurts more than I'd like. Sorry, that's just how spirit gum works. If you wanted to stay on with all the hot lights and intense scenes, it's gotta be essentially your own skin. Which is why it hurts so much every time you remove it. You're an adult, you can handle it. No adults here. I merely portray one on television. You mean you play one on TV? It's said uh, differently in England. It definitely sounds like you're making it up. You can't prove it. I could just ask Lloyd. That's cheating. No, it's calling your bluff. I set to work applying spirit gum remover to the edge of his prosthetic. Now, no more messing around or this is going to hurt you. As you wish, little wizard. Thank you, Mr. Brandon. I need to be professional with you, because otherwise I'll get myself in trouble again. Like I do. I can't believe fatigue's already at 20 again. Girl, why can you not just do me a, a solid and get some heart sleep? Oh, hello. Knock, knock. How goes? It goes. Just wondering if you got a spare moment to hang next week. Since I'll be leaving for the tour Friday afternoon. Was hoping we could hang out before then. Sounds good to me. Friday morning? Perfect. I'll see you then. Oh, he's off on tour again, that boy. Okay, Alvin, what do you think about Moonlight Avenger? Just saw Moonlight Avenger with a friend. It totally lives up to the hype. I don't know. I hate how they gutted the entire Wasteland story arc and then changed Justin's origin story. Yeah, it was different, but I think the change was good based on the mainstream audience and what they had to work with. I understand why they did it, and I think it's fine. Did anyone stick around for the scene after the credits? I wanted to, but my family all insisted on leaving while the credits were still rolling. No one spoil it for me. I'm going to go watch it again by myself. Good man. Or lady. Next episode! Sound off, guys! Ryan's going to try tracking Vice down himself? No offense, but he's no Katarina. Vice is probably laughing right now. Katarina better get out of the hospital soon. This episode totally dragged without her. Okay. What's her status? Eee. Eee. Alvin, let's go see that movie again. We gotta stay after the credits. Don't know if we did that properly. Let's go. Alright. Moonlight Avenger eclipsed. It has to be me. Amazing. Again. That was worth it just to see the scene after the credits again. Yes. I got a better look at the silhouette this time. I think they're going to introduce Blue Moon next time. Alan grabs my hand. I think I will die of happiness if that happens. I'd rather you stay alive if that's okay. I'll try, but I can't make any promises. Well, thanks for coming with me. No problem. He grabbed our hand! Ah! That's so cute! I'm so happy about that. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna sleep, and then we'll study, and then work and exercise, maybe? Okay. <laughs> nope, I'm still wrong. Oh. Alvin seems unusually distant today. He drifts from one student to the next, barely taking time to thoroughly answer any questions. The students seem uncomfortable, but no one says anything about it. As soon as the tutoring session is over, they quickly pack up their things and hurry out. Alvin stares at them as they leave, but he makes no move to follow. Alvin, is something wrong? Huh? What? Is something wrong? You seem... distracted. Oh... <sighs> he sinks into a chair. It's Professor Meridia. What happened? I haven't seen her in a while. Oh, well, that's true. Alvin shakes his head. Oh no! Oh no! She had a heart attack. By the time anyone got to her, it was... Alvin chokes on his words. Apparently, one of her sons is away on a trip, mountain climbing or something, where they can't reach him. 
The family doesn't want the world to know before he does, so they've kept it quiet. Oh no, I'm so sad! But the school's already asked me to teach her classes for the rest of the semester. Oh. Oh, Alvin! Oh, Alvin, that is so incredibly sad! He takes a breath and I see his body shiver. Feels like he's holding back tears. They're already moving on so quickly. And I don't want to just replace her like some sort of spare part. I don't think I can do this. Tears start spilling from his eyes despite his best efforts to hold them back. Sean, what am I supposed to do? I don't respond. Honestly, I'm not sure what to say. A few other students enter the library, but as soon as they take stock of the situation, they navigate away from us. After a few stilted breaths, Alvin manages to find his voice again. I'm sorry. This is so embarrassing. You don't have to apologize. There's nothing embarrassing about caring for someone. Professor Meridi always believed in me. And I know it sounds stupid, but she reminds me of my mom. And hearing about her death brought up back all sorts of emotions from when mom was... Battling cancer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember the stories. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Sean. No more apologizing. I'm glad I can be here with you right now. Alvin nods. The school asked you to finish teaching her classes? Alvin nods again. Any idea why? Couldn't another professor take over? Alvin shakes his head. As her teaching assistant, I know her planned curriculum better. Besides, I think the school prefers the students have someone familiar teaching. It's just for the summer. But next semester, I'm sure they'll find someone. I'm sorry this has been thrust upon you. I hope you know that if you want any help or just someone to talk to, I'm right here. He reach I reach for his hand. He flinches at my initial touch, but after a moment he relaxes and wraps his fingers around mine. Thank you. If it's okay, I need some time alone to collect my thoughts. But I'm happy to know you're here. Of course. Anytime you want to talk, just call me. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this took such a turn for sadness! And now every time I see Meridia, I'm gonna be so incredibly sad because now I know she dies of a heart attack. I never even thought anything of it when I didn't see her as much later in Adam's route. I just thought, you know, we're just not seeing her in, as, in scenes and stuff. That's not unusual in games. Oh dear. Sorry, I need a sip of water. I'm getting all choked up with emotion over here. <clears throat> Wash some of that down. Sean, I'm so glad you're here. Allison leaps at me the minute I step into the makeup trailer. Uh, Allison? What are you doing here? You're not filming today. No, I'm here to save John. From what? Get after... You! Allison screams at Selena as soon as their eyes meet. Allison, what are you doing? Sean, if you aren't going to help, I don't need you. Allison grabs my shoulder and shoves me out of the makeup trailer. Allison! I grab the door handle, but Allison's already locked it. Allison, what are you doing? Sean, go find a key. Selena speaks in a calm, even voice. R right I feel like such an idiot. Here I am panicking about Selena, and she manages to stay calm. I race across the soundstage, searching for someone who might have a key. Whoa, girly, where's the fire? It's Allison! She, uh, I don't know, but she attacked Selena, and now they're locked in the makeup trailer together. Got it. Rachel pulls a ring of keys from her pocket. Let's go. Rachel speeds off toward the trailer, leaving me in her dust. By the time I make it back to the trailer, she's already inside. Let me go! She's going to hurt him again! Hurt who? John! She already cut his face! Rachel and I exchange nervous glances. 
You mean like in the show? That's just fiction. Selena holds a hand up. Allison, is it? Why do you care? You hurt John! I have to stop you! Selena nods. I understand. You're worried about John's safety. Allison nods. It's scary to think he's in danger, isn't it? Do you want to talk about it? <sighs> we should call your parents. I'm sure they can help. <sighs> Rachel, let her go. Are you sure? She didn't try to hurt me, and I think she's uncomfortable right now. Rachel reluctantly releases Allison from her grip. Looking at how tense her muscles are, I'm guessing she's ready to intervene if Allison tries anything. Let's call your parents. I bet they're worried about John, too. Selena nods at me. Let Sean do it. You know she's your friend. Allison nods numbly and hands me her phone. Selena looks pointedly at the door. Right. I step out of the makeup trailer and find the home number on Allison's phone. Hello? Um, hello. Is this Mrs. Brandon? I'm sorry, I think you have the wrong number. Um, I'm here with your daughter Allison. She, uh... Where are you? The woman's voice is suddenly tensed up. Dodgson Studios, it's... I know where that is. Tell her we're coming. I step back into the trailer and return the phone to Allison. Your mom says she's on her way. I'm happy to hear that. That's good, isn't it? Allison takes a moment to process the statement before nodding. That's good. Rachel, do you think you could go outside and wait for Allison's mother? But... I'll let you know if anything comes up. If you say so. Rachel leaves the trailer, but she doesn't look happy about it. Selena smiles at Allison. Do you want to talk about how you feel right now? I... I'm really scared. Things are really confusing right now. John was supposed to help me. He was going to make it better again, but then he got hurt. You hurt him! It's really scary to see someone getting hurt, isn't it? Uh, yes. Wow, Selena's handling this with a lot more calm than I would have imagined. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. It's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I feel the same way sometimes. Really? I think a lot of people do. You're not alone. Sean feels like that too, right? Huh? Uh, of course. I get scared a lot. Sometimes if there are too many people, or I don't know where I am, I can't even breathe. And it gets harder to understand what's going on. And then I feel so alone, like no one else will ever understand what I'm feeling. Everyone says you'll be okay. But it doesn't feel like anything's okay. Exactly. You really do understand. We both do. There's a soft knock on the trailer door. Hey, uh, Mrs. Powers is here? She says she's Allison's mother? Mom! Powers? Selena notices my confused expression and shakes her head. Uh, um, I think I have to go now. I understand. As soon as Allison steps out, I feel my body relax. I need to talk to Lloyd. Selena leaves without another word. I slump down into the nearest chair and shut my eyes. That was an adventure. Yeah, we've had some adventures this week. All right. Clothes, toothbrush. Adam picks through his suitcase carefully. I've never seen you so serious about something before. It's my first time doing this on my own. I gotta make sure I don't mess up. I like this side of you. I'm super serious now. For how long? About five seconds, it seems. It's a start. I'm gonna miss you, Sean. Likewise. But this will be good for you. Yeah, but broccoli's also good for me, and I'm not a fan. <laughs> well, either way, I'm sure you'll be fine. Just be sure to stay in touch, okay? Adam zips up his suitcase and nods. Wish me luck. Like you need it. I missed that with you two. That was cute. Oh, right. Vice versus. Doop. Not to start a fight or anything, but this latest episode was easily the best. Agreed. Vice is even more insane than I thought. I can't believe he managed to pose as a doctor and sneak Katarina out of there. <sighs> 
It's weird. I feel weird about calling Alvin to hang out. I feel like I should take him for coffee this week. Let's go get a sandwich. Instead of watching a movie. Yeah, let's go get a sandwich. Oh, um, sure. Oh, I thought... Did I pick that too many times? Looks like he's not too enthusiastic about eating the same food so often. I should get something different next time. I ruined it. I tried to be comforting and I ruined it. I'm so sorry, Alvin. <sighs> okay. Well. <laughs> whoops the dupes I suppose. My bad. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna work. That doesn't lower my GPA. Exercise lowers my GPA. <sighs> well, we're back to tutoring. At least you look a little, a little better this week. Uh, I fell off again. <sighs> Man, I feel so depressed about Professor Meridia. Hey, Hitman Cavalt. Grades are still good. Thank you so much, sir. Still only earning a buck in ad revenue. Oh well. <laughs> Need to sleep again. Miss Haraway, how are you? I'm fine, Sean. No need to worry about me. I'm sorry. It's just that after Allison... Yes, I do feel bad I couldn't do more for her. What happened? Her parents have been very private about the matter, but my best guess is that she had a psychotic break. What? Is she okay? I hope so. But again, her parents have been very private, as is their right. I'm impressed that you figured it out so quickly. I panicked more than I should have, and I think Rachel got overly defensive. I'm sure neither of you has nearly as much experience as I do. Um, if it's not prying too much? I've had several stalkers in my time. One who was clearly convinced that I was in grave danger from an alien attack. He broke into my house and tried to take me away from my own protection. As a child, it was a very terrifying experience. I didn't fully understand what was going on. Afterwards, I resolved to learn as much as I could so that I'd be ready if it ever happened again. How old were you when this happened? Twelve. That's a really level-headed reaction from a twelve-year-old. You think so? I felt foolish for never considering it before. Well, now I feel like the foolish one for not seeing it sooner. You couldn't have known. And from what her parents said, I think this is her first break. Do you think she'll be okay? It's a complicated situation. Either way, I doubt we'll see her again for some time. Oh, poor Allison. Hope she gets some help. Got a TV interview next Monday morning. Kinda nervous about it. I'd feel better if I knew you were watching. Okay. Fair. Ren Fair is next week. Anyone else going? I'll be there. My aunt asked me to help her do demos at her soap making booth. You never told me your aunt runs the soap making booth. That's cool. I wish I could, but they sold out of tickets months ago. I really wanted to see the night battles this year. Aww. Didn't we win tickets last year? Question mark. Or am I thinking of something else that I want? I can't remember. Okay, I take it back. This episode was the best episode. Ah, did she really kill Vice? I can't believe that. He obviously set her up. With all the drugs she was on from the hospital, she couldn't have even shot straight. But the DNA evidence says it's him. If she didn't kill him, then who did? Who indeed? Uh, status. 22 fatigue. Yikes. Hey, Alvin. Let's go to see a different movie this week. Let's see Night Witches. Don't waste your time apologizing to the dead. They can't hear you when it takes you away from the living who still need you. If I don't apologize, then I'll forget my reason for fighting. And if I forget that, what good am I to the living? I'm impressed by how historically accurate that film was. I was expecting more creative embellishment. They didn't need it. What happened is incredible enough on its own. 
I confess, I don't think I'd be able to handle a second viewing. It's emotionally powerful and somewhat draining. Well, thanks for coming with me. No problem. Okay, I won't ask you a second time, Elvin. That'll be my one exception. Um... Really, I can study now? Why would you let me study now? My grades are perfect. I don't understand you sometimes, game. Gotta be honest. Study. Okay. I head into the library and duck into the TV room. Thankfully, very few people actually show up here in the summer. TV's online. Flip the TV on and the screen lights up just in time to display a clip from one of Adam's old concerts. This was, I think a woman was interviewing him last time, so I'll change my voice a little bit. Up next, we interview a young artist who's had a me meteoric rise to fame in the past year. Please welcome Adam Eaton. The audience bursts into applause, and I find myself cheering softly for Adam as he walks in onto the set. Adam, it's so good to have you on the show. Yeah, uh, thanks for asking me on. Adam smiles back at the host, but I can sense a bit of hesitation in his voice. Now, your new album, Island Heart, just came out. Adam nods. Yes. And it's really different from your first one. Oh, uh, yeah. So I don't know how many of you know this, but I'm originally from Hawaii. But this past year I've been going to college in Steel City. A few members of the audience cheer. It's been kind of a rough transition for me, you know? So I wound up writing a lot of music about home and adjusting to a new life and stuff. That's really exciting. Of course, I bought the album on day one, and I was amazed at how different some of it was. What is it like moving to the big city? What caught you off guard about it? Well, uh, so much, you know. I know this is probably going to sound silly, but it was my first time seeing a mall with two floors. I think everyone I worked with was like, oh, here comes that island boy again. Actually, my first month there, this photographer nicknamed me Palm Tree. The host glances at Adam's hair and bursts out laughing. <laughs> Palm Tree, that's perfect. Yeah, everyone else thought so too. So we all know you're from Hawaii, but are you Hawaiian? Um, only half. The other half is Japanese. But Eaton doesn't sound Japanese or Hawaiian. Yeah, my grandfather's family name was Ito, but back in the plantation days, a lot of guys westernized their names. Well, I think Ito's a lovely name. Ah, that's neat. Thanks, although I'm not sure I can take any credit for it. Will you write any songs that delve more into your family history? I don't know. Maybe you'll see it on my next album. But you'll have to get this one first. The host turns to the audience and holds up a copy of Adam's CD. Island Heart is out in stores now. Stay with us, we'll be right back after the break with the star of Moonlight Avenger. Okay, so he, she didn't bring up Sean this time around. I guess that only happens on his route. Interesting. I turn off the TV just as my phone starts ringing. Hey there, good job on the interview. You really think so? I was so nervous. Don't worry, I don't think anyone will be able to tell. Oh, that's good. I didn't do too badly, did I? Not at all. I think you were great. Oh, good. Well, I wish I could talk longer, but they're dragging me off to sign things. I understand. Later. Do your best. <laughs> Alvin's birthday is coming up this week. Should I bring him a gift? What should I give him? Knight Errant figure, I'm so glad I, I got you. Hope this is a good choice. Good work today, Sean. I think the students really learned a lot. By the way, I brought you a birthday gift. What? Why? You got me something, so it's only fair. Okay, okay. I won't argue. Oh, thank you. What is it? See for yourself. Knight! This is a rare figure. Alvin opens the package carefully, making sure not to damage the box. This is a real deal. How did you get this? I know a place. What kind of place? They sold out of pre-orders months ago. This is amazing. Maybe it's better not to ask questions. Alvin adjusts the figure's pose. Look at all the points of articulation. This thing is amazing. He plays with one of the arms. 
Aha! Nice ball joints. Usually I think ball joints look weird on human characters, but the armor is a good cheat. And look at all these accessories! I'm going to have so much fun playing with this. Um, I mean... posing. There's no good way to say this, is there? I'm just happy you like it. Of course I do. This is great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yay! We got a good gift for his birthday. I'm so happy. I'd be happier if you slept better, Sean, but oh well. <sighs> Before we begin filming, Lloyd steps up and waves his hand. Attention, everyone. I have an important announcement. John and I have heard from the network, and unfortunately, they will not be renewing Vice Versus for a second season. What? The world seems to go fuzzy for a moment as I try to process what Lloyd just said. Vice Versus has been cancelled? I suppose it can't be helped. Can't be helped? Those network guys are morons and they don't realize they've got a good thing going here. Well, I'll still be recording until August, so let's all do our best until then. You guys are an amazing crew, and we've made an amazing show, and we're going to keep making an amazing show until our very last day. There will be a few rewrites for the ending, but for now we'll be filming as usual. And when we're done, we can all go home and polish our best TV drama awards. <laughs> That's right. The crew heads off to get ready, uh, leaving me to collect my thoughts. I already knew that this was an unstable industry. I've seen it happen to Mom all the time. But even knowing that ahead of time, being cancelled really stings. Still, Lloyd's speech seemed to encourage everyone. Everyone else is already hard at work. Ugh. Not strong enough. Just not strong enough. I'm gonna ha yep, <laughs> I'm gonna have to sleep. That's for darn sure. <laughs> you won! To Miss Sean Gooden. A year ago, you participated in a survey at Steel City Mall. Your name has been drawn for a prize of two tickets to the Steel City Renaissance Fair. We have a limited number of prizes available, so please respond immediately to confirm your email address. I confirm. This is my address. Your prize will be shipped to you next week. This is an automated response from Mall Survey. Int. Do not respond to this email. Okay. Let's hear about Night Witches. This is a movie you need to see at least once. I just want to see it with my friend and wow, it's powerful. I'm kind of an emotional wreck after seeing that, but like in a good way? Question mark? Whoa, latest episode was intense. All the evidence seems to be stacking up against Katarina. There's no way she killed Vice. Maybe Ryan did it. Whoa, good idea. He's been acting really on edge this whole time. Those casual tank tops of the divide are amazing! I love mine! Me too! Me three! I love my tank top. I don't know if that actually is the tank top. Can't remember now. Oh well, Alvin, we have one more movie to see. Okay. Let's watch Machete Man. Hey guys, where's Bobby? Oh no, Bobby! Bobby! We have to go back for him! Back there with that thing? We'll be killed! Sorry, but Bobby's on his own. Poor Bobby. <laughs> wow, that was scarier than I expected. Likewise, but the monster's design was really clever. Well, thanks for coming with me. No problem. Poor Sean didn't like it at all. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Oh, well, we'll see what he has to say about that next time. In the meantime, we need to sleep three times, I think. 